Hello, this is David D. Hilser. I am a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and if you're not buying exactly what mainstream physics and cosmology are selling, then this is the place for you. There are thousands and thousands of scientists from around the world who have been working for decades outside the mainstream who have identified problems, fixed those problems, and are proposing new theories and models. So you won't find anything like this on the YouTube, so be sure to click down below on the subscriber button and that little bell next to it so you'll be alerted to our next video videos. Today we're going to be talking about who else but Stephen Hawking. He unfortunately passed away just recently. I think he was 76 years old. Died of course on Pi Day and Albert Einstein's birthday and of course the lore continues. Um, I've done a couple videos on him. If you haven't seen them I'll have uh, links to those. You can take a look at those. But today I'm going to talk about something interesting that I got from when I got thinking about doing the last talk I did on, on Mr. Stephen Hawking. And of course, uh, it has to do with what people really understand about someone's theory. Uh, and let's take a look at uh, people who are going to maybe look up uh, Stephen Hawking on the internet and say, hey, I've heard about this. What did he really do? They're going to take a look at this and they're going to find out. And I want to take a look at this one phrase, which I actually had in my last video, but I didn't concentrate on it. I wanted to save that for a separate video itself. And let's take a look at that. If you look very closely here, he talks about Stephen Hawking, who uh, explained some uh, um, the union of the general theory of relativity and quantum mechanics. And so we're going to take a look at that kind of phrase. I'm going to rephrase it because this is the kind of phrase I saw in, actually in another article. So we're going to take a look at that. And so this is what we would have written in some article uh, that you would see. Stephen Hawking united quantum mechanics together with Einstein's theory of general relativity. Now that's what a person's reading. Now we're going to take a look at the different audiences as to what they are going to really understand about that phrase. And so we're going to take the first one, which is the layman. And let's say this is pretty much a real layman, a person who hasn't read anything really much about science, doesn't keep up with them, doesn't even know, for instance, like Albert Einstein was a, uh, a, a physicist, maybe know about Stephen Hawking, maybe not. But when he reads this, the person or he or she reads this who knows really nothing about science, they're going to read Stephen Hawking united Zimberflim together with Einstein's theory of Labersnatch. Now, yeah. That's what they're going to read. They, they don't know what quantum mechanics is or the theory of general relativity. So this is what it sounds like to them. And they're just going to read the article and say, oh, that's nice. Doesn't affect me. Who cares? That kind of thing. Or maybe they'll, they'll ask a friend what it is or, you know, but that's the general population. That's what they understand about quantum mechanics and the general theory of relativity. Um, pretty much that sums it up. Now, if we look at the mainstream, let's take a look at what I, I would interpret the mainstream when they, people who believe all the mainstream theory to be totally correct, they're going to say, they're going to read it more like this. Stephen Hawking united a peculiar, peculiar, let's try that again. Stephen Hawking united a peculiar theory together with Einstein's theory of established fact. So if you look at the, the theory of general relativity, that is pretty much cons considered to be absolute fact, except for like when you talk to uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, who says it fails in the middle of black holes, and then maybe string theory comes to the rescue. I've talked about that. That's just asinine since string theory was invented. It was purposely invented to just try to do mathematics, to try to describe everything. The original, uh, the original authors of string String theory literally are horrified today to think that people go on and, and are treating these things as real. If you talk about them long enough and if they're magical enough and if no one understands what the heck you're, you're saying but you sound like you're authoritarian on it, that in fact people will then, okay, it must be right. Well, that's kind of the way it goes. Now, as for uh, quantum mechanics, a peculiar theory because you know, you know, oh, uh, light is a particle. Light is a wave. We have act spooky actions at a distance, meaning, well, we're supposed to have two particles knowing exactly what the other one is doing in two different and very in, in places that are separated by a large, large distance. In fact, we've talked about using this for almost instant communication. Uh, we have this whole idea of the eraser, history eraser experiment, where if you look at a photon coming from a galaxy from billions of light years away, and it comes, if I look at it in one type of, of uh, like a 
telescope and you look at it through your naked eye that that photon actually could go in uh, different directions and that oh well maybe it's the consciousness of all beings who will see i mean these are real discussions in quantum mechanics i'm going to talk about that sometime because it is so bizarre now you're asking me well that's nice dave criticize but do you have answers yes we have uh various theories that look at these experiments some people look at it in just the regular uh in mainstream physics and said there isn't anything really spooky or weird going on or if you look like a, a look at a, a model like my father and i who have a particle model everything is newtonian light is light is physical gravity is physical they're all particles all that stuff well we can describe exactly what's going on for the double slit and i've talked about this before the double slit experiment where you have light going through and if you turn on a detector it looks like it goes from a particle to a to a wave and a wave and to a particle just because they said you're looking at it no these are all bad interpretations and without any physical model again i'll go into more detail uh, uh with that but this is what mainstream will, will look at this stephen hawking united peculiar theory together with einstein's theory of an of established fact now if we go to the last one which is the dissident or critical thinker view um, I want to call them critical thinker because this is sort of like I'm against everything, but no, we critical thinkers will look at it and we basically say Stephen Hawking united a very bad theory with Einstein's bad theory. And that's what most all of us outside the mainstream, it's not everybody. We have people in our organization that think special relativity is fine and dandy. The difference is, is our, 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 um, organization allows for dissenting points of view to sit in the same room and talk to each other to give papers and discuss things and discuss the pros and cons of these things so when you talk about i've already talked about quantum uh, mechanics and how that's a very bad theory i've already gone over that in my last slide because i always get ahead of myself and of course the bad theory of the general theory of relativity well where do we start space time it ain't anything. Space-time is mathematical whatever it is because time, as many of us outside the mainstream call it, is has to do with motion. Time doesn't, you know, that's what it is. In fact, we have Dr. Glenn Borkert saying that time is motion. So uh, you've got a motion together with space, which is nothing. You put it together and you make a something out of it, then you bend it. No. So, I mean, you just start there. Does that mean we have, we have theories that will describe gravity. In fact, Newton's gravity will describe even the funny speeds of stars on the edge of galaxies, so you don't even need dark matter. Go see Cameron, um, oh man, I don't know, I can't, Big, big of Saul, I, Rebusol, Regusol, I'm sorry, Cameron, I'll have that link. If you look right up there, you'll have it there, folks. You know, I don't have time to edit a lot of these things, so if you just go up there and click on that, I have his paper. You can read it. It's all in the Newtonian mecha uh, mechanics, uh, mechanical Newtonian world, and in fact, the Newtonian gravity will describe, without any dark matter, dark energy, the speed of those uh, stars. So it's not needed. So um, this is really interesting i mean let's go through it again uh slide by slide we have first what is written stephen hawking united quantum mechanics together with einstein's theory of general relativity we then go to layman who you just see stephen hawking united blah 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 together with einstein's theory of blah 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 and then of course the mainstream says well we have stephen hawking united a peculiar theory we're still trying to work on it together with einstein's established fact of a theory and of course we critical thinkers outside the mainstream praise basically said hey, you know Stephen Hawking united a very bad theory together with Einstein's bad theory so I don't think I need to tell you what we think of, of Mr. Uh, Stephen Hawking and his work of uniting these two things and of course I will I gotta go one back even further we're gonna go back to uh, slide two here oh slide three sorry and that is um, you can see after you he talks they talk about here in the Wikipedia the general theory of, te of relativity and quantum mechanics this is the other one that I've mentioned before he was a vigorous supporter of the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics we this this is bad this is very 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 bad we'll talk about that in another uh, segment but um, again for those of you who uh, want to get a critical thinker's perspective on just this one simple phrase, 
this is what we think about it and I hope this gives you a little bit of insight on to what we do and again one of the great things is is that on this channel we don't just talk about how bad it is we actually have people with real good alternatives wow and we have numerous yes just like other professions oh my gosh are there more than one computer language are there one more than one human language oh everyone should only do do one i mean why is this idea that we can't have several competing theories out there for the universe in which we do and we support each other because that's the way we move science forward and remember don't take anything i say or anybody else's word on faith i am david hilster stay critical stay thinking i oops i am david hilster <laughs> ciao for now I messed that up eh.